Hey everyone, it's been just over a year since my Momentum 3 review, and since then, I've used these earbuds a lot. So today, we're gonna to be going through all the nitty gritty details, the good, the bad, what I'd like to see improved for the Momentum 4, and if they're still worth buying today, because they have been updated a lot through firmware in the last year. Now, keep in mind, going off previous Sennheiser True Wireless releases, they release a new bud every two years. It's only been a year, so we probably won't see a Momentum 4 for another year. But now let's get into it. The reason I've used these earbuds so much is because these are my go-to training earbud and I usually train four days a week for two hours. So do the math there, that's a lot of hours of total use. I've also dropped the case and the earbuds countless times. I'm a very clumsy person. The earbuds have been covered in sweat and chalk and you can tell by looking at them, they've got some marks on them. They've been used quite a bit. Apart from that, they're completely fine. Now, usually I choose a training earbud mainly based off how well the buds stay in my ears, but that's not the case for the Momentums. They do fit me quite well. There's no way they're gonna fall out but I do find myself having to readjust quite a bit throughout my sessions. I use the second largest ear tip and the largest wing tip. I do have pretty large ears, so the wing tip doesn't really do too much for me. It would be nice to see some larger wing tips on the next version. Getting a good seal with the ear tips is also a bit tricky, but with practice, I have found it a lot easier. For me, I just need to take the earbuds in and out a couple of times until I feel an even seal. This is only a slight annoyance and honestly something I have gotten used to, but most earbuds that I test don't really have this issue. There are plenty of other earbuds out there that give me an easy seal and better security, such as the AirPods Pro 2, Nothing E2, JBL Live Pro 2, and there's plenty more. And every earbud that I review, I test thoroughly in the gym, but I keep finding myself going back to the Momentum 3 for their dynamic sound quality. They just can't be beaten when you want a nice, full, dynamic sound. And I will talk about the sound a little bit later, or you can just skip to it. There are timestamps down there for your ease. But back to the fit, I did mention I use these when training, and that is mainly when weight training, doing some static cardio or walking. These are not a bud I would recommend when running since a lot of body borne noise is created. I hear my own breathing quite a lot, as well as the footsteps I make on the ground. They're quite loud and this takes away from the sound. It mainly takes away from the bass. And when running, you probably wanna use a transparency mode to hear your surroundings. The issue there is that the microphones pick up a lot of wind noise and it's just kind of annoying running with transparency mode on. So I wouldn't recommend these when running. Some of my go-to earbuds when running are the AirPods Pro 2, AirPods 3, because they don't have an ear tip, JBL Live Pro 2 are also quite good. And the Sennheiser Sport are also a decent one. They're actually designed for sports and running in mind. They don't sound as good as the Momentum 3. They do come pretty close, but they fix the body borne noise issues that the Momentum 3 have. Check out the video up here for a detailed comparison between the Sport and the Momentums. Now let's talk about the battery life and mainly how well the battery has held up in the last year. And it's just the harsh truth that battery issues, battery drain issues are quite common, even with premium earbuds, I'm talking Bose, Sony, Apple. I've had issues with my AirPods Pro too. Had to get a new case. And I have seen some comments of people's issues with the Momentum 3. Luckily for me, I've had no issues at all. From day one, the battery life was incredibly solid. I did get over eight hours at 70% volume with noise cancelling on in my test. And here's what I got in my test at 70% volume today so you can see how it compares. And the total battery life with the case and the earbuds is 28 hours. So I find I only really have to charge the earbuds every three to four weeks. So still great battery life today, but let me know in the comments your experience with Sennheiser's earbuds. One clear issue with the case though is still its size. For today's standards, it's just a bit too chunky. The total battery life is great. And for me personally, the size doesn't really matter since I just leave it in my gym bag. But the size of it definitely holds me back from chucking it in my pocket. This is where I'll just go for my AirPods Pro 2 instead. But I still love the design of the case and I just chuck this thing in my bag, throw that bag around. Usually I have like five other earbuds I'm testing at the time in there and a whole bunch of random things, which really does test the durability of the case and how easily it gets scratched. And you can see my case still looks great today. The durability is very solid. Now let's talk about controls. This is where the nitpicks start to come in because the controls work great. You can control everything, including volume up and down. You can customize almost everything. I say almost everything since you can only add volume control on the long hold on the left and right earbud. Also transparency and noise canceling are separate functions. So you need to set either one to a different control rather than having it all on like the single tap, for example. I also find it pretty frustrating when turning transparency mode on because you don't get any beep feedback to know whether or not you've actually turned it on or off. 
This is mainly an issue if music is playing because you can't hear the transparency mode, but if you have music paused, then of course you can easily hear the transparency mode turn on unless you're in a quiet environment. And it's just a little strange because the noise canceling gives you a different beep feedback, whether it's on or off. So I don't know why it's not on the transparency mode. Another issue with the transparency mode is related to the in-ear detection that the earbuds use to automatically pause and play your music. So when you have transparency mode on and you take one or both earbuds out of your ear, transparency mode will turn off. So if you put the earbuds back in your ear, transparency mode will stay turned off. So you manually have to turn it back on again. I honestly don't know why this happens because with noise canceling on, if you take your earbuds out, noise canceling stays on, put them back in your ears, noise canceling is still on. A small thing, but it's pretty annoying. There's also no mute button when you're on a phone call. Another small thing, but you can start to see a few small things start to stack up and I feel like they can all easily be fixed. Because like I said, Sennheiser have updated their earbuds quite a bit over the last year and that shows with connectivity. So there have been two big updates. The first one is the addition of multi-point connection. So that came out about six months ago, which allows you to connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. And in my testing, it works really well. All you need to do is just pause media on one device before you resume it on your other device. And I've tested it on my iPhone 12 Pro, Samsung Galaxy S10e and my MacBook Pro M1. The only issue with it is whenever I open it up in the app to change the settings, the app just crashes and that's always happened, but I don't really have to adjust the settings, but if you want to on an iPhone, it doesn't work for me. Now, the second big update is the addition of high-res audio because these earbuds use Aptex Adaptive, which is actually high-res audio capable. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's very similar to what you get with LDAC high-resolution audio codec, and there was nothing too clear online to say whether LDAC is better than Aptex Adaptive even though the total kilobits per second on LDAC is almost double what you get on Aptex Adaptive, but then it's not just about how big the number is. But anyway, all the earbuds that have LDAC are always tested to see how much better the quality improves. Normally it's a couple of percent if you don't use high quality streaming. If you use high quality streaming, you get another couple of percent above that. Now I don't have a phone compatible with Aptex Adaptive, but CEO in the making did a video on the high-res audio update. He kind of explained it similar to what I noticed with LDAC, a very subtle improvement, a couple of percent in audio quality. So I feel like it's pretty close, not a massive feature, but if you use an Aptex adaptive phone, it's there if you need. Now, call quality is usually a feature on a lot of earbuds that do get updated over time. So what I'm gonna do now is, is compare my audio recording from my original review to the latest firmware of what it sounds like today. It's not gonna be exactly in the same setting, but I'll try and get it as close as possible. All right, so here we are in the outside world with the Sennheiser Momentum 3 True Wireless Earbuds. All right, so here we are with the Sennheiser Momentum 3 True Wireless Earbuds. All right, and here's the call quality of Generation 3. So hopefully you can hear my voice well and all the noise around me is getting blocked out. All right, if you're enjoying the video, as usual, please chuck a like down there because it does help the video out. Now we're going to talk about noise cancelling. This is where the niggles kind of continue and some of them drive me a little bit crazy at times. First, the noise cancelling is great. Here's my overall noise cancelling ranking with all the earbuds that I have tested. You can see Senny is in the top five. It's not the best noise cancelling out there, but it is very, very solid. The only issue with it is how easily the microphones pick up wind noise when you do have noise cancelling on. To the point where sometimes I'll just go for a walk outside. It doesn't even have to be very windy. It's just like me walking slowly creates a bit of wind and the microphones pick it up. And if it is a windy day, I can be listening above 60, 70% volume and the wind is still very audible. There is a wind noise reduction mode in the app, which you can turn on manually. And this completely cuts out the microphones picking up the wind noise, but do keep in mind, this is gonna reduce your noise canceling strength by just over half. So if I'm outside, sometimes I just find turning noise canceling off completely is the best way to go because the transparency mode, like I said, before, it also does the exact same thing. It picks up wind incredibly easily. And of course, this is inevitable with any true wireless earbud that has noise canceling and a transparency mode. But the Momentum 3 are up there with the worst that I've tested. And looking at the design of the earbuds and where the microphones are placed, it kind of makes sense why this does happen. Because the microphone is kind of on the bottom corner of the earbud there. That microphone is facing straight ahead of whatever way you're gonna be walking. So when the wind hits, it's going straight into the microphones those mics are picking it all up incredibly easily. So I'm really hoping Sennheiser sorts this out with their next release. Also the transparency mode itself needs some improvement. It's not too bad, it's pretty natural, but there is a lot of white noise hiss when using the transparency mode in a more quiet environment. 
and you can adjust the strength in the app, but anything above 50%, which is what it's on by default, there's just way too much white noise. Even at the default setting, a decent amount of white noise. If you turn it down, it reduces, but then it's pretty hard to hear things. To the point, even with earbuds in, I could have a conversation with someone, but if it's a slightly noisy environment with a bit of noise going on around, I find just taking the earbuds out is a bit easier. Where a pair like the AirPods Pro 2, I can happily wear those if I'm talking to someone. Now, throughout the whole video, you've probably noticed these buds have a lot of little flaws, but despite all the flaws, what keeps me coming back to these earbuds is their sound quality. It isn't the most balanced, the cleanest, or most well-refined tuning out there, but it does have the most dynamic and versatile sound out of any earbud I've ever tested. Now, what do I mean by dynamic and versatile? And the reason I explain it like this is because of the amount of freedom you get to customize the sound to your liking, whether you want a nice balanced and clean sound or an over the top bass boosted sound. Because without customizing the sound at all, right out of the box, they sound pretty decent. It is a balanced tuning, but with nice deep sub bass, crisp treble and a smooth mid range. But to be honest, if you're looking for a more balanced tuning, you're better off going for a pair like the AirPods Pro 2 or the Nothing E2. But if you're like me, you want a little extra thump in the low end, but want to retain as much clarity as possible, the Momentum 3 are my number one bud. And if you're also looking for a bud where you can just push the bass at times to some over the top bass boosted subwoofer levels, the Momentum 3 are also number one when it comes to this. So if I'm in the mood just to really intricately listen to my music, I think they sound the best with no EQ customization on. Most of the time when using the earbuds, mainly when training of course, I do a subtle bass boost in the sub bass and the mid bass and a little boost in the treble. And I have this on most of the time and I find that this brings out a little bit of extra bass. It keeps the crisp treble. It does dial down the mids ever so slightly, which I don't mind, but they just work with all kinds of genres with that tuning on. And then if I'm feeling really crazy, I chuck on the bass boost EQ along with this bass boost EQ. And that's what I'm gonna use if I'm going for like a really heavy lift and I just need to crank some hard style, some nice bass heavy music and the buzz just become a little bit over the top boomy and they're great for that. And if I wanna take it even further, this is my ultimate bass EQ where I bring the mids down heaps and it's really just bass and treble. And this does sound pretty crazy, but it's more of a fun thing to play around with. And you can really push the bass to levels where most earbuds I've tested will start to distort, sound pretty weird, but the momentum still sound okay when you're pushing out this much bass. Now I also need to add what the recent firmware update has done to the sound quality. I wasn't gonna add this in the video. I kind of played around with it and I didn't think it was that good. I tried it again and it's pretty game changing. So this is firmware 2.12.33, and this now gives you even more sound customization. First is the extra bands in the EQ. So now you get five bands compared to three. So this gives you more freedom to play around with the mid bass and the upper mid range. But out of all the updates I've talked about here today, that's not the massive change, obviously. It's gonna be with the sound personalization. So you just go in the app down to the My Sound section, then choose Sound Personalization. And this feature can drastically change how the buds sound, well past how you can tailor them with the five band EQ. And a lot of buds have sound personalization nowadays, most of them do, and this is definitely the strangest that I've tried. As you run through the test, you kind of just adjust the volume of certain instruments then you get your tailored sound. And once I ran through the test and adjusted all the volumes to what I thought was best, it didn't really change the sound too much, which is why I dismissed this feature in the first place. It's not until you fine tune the sound where you can really start to get these sounding good. And they should really explain in the app how this works, but roughly the further to the right you go, this is gonna increase treble. The further to the left, this will increase the mids. Higher up is less bass and lower down is more bass. So for me, I like leaving the dot here close to the bottom right corner. And with it there, it increases the bass, increases the mids and treble, creates a much more direct sound to the point where I couldn't really recreate it in the EQ. And I also find it increases the sound stage slightly as well as opening up the bass. So the bass doesn't really sound too centered. It becomes a bit wider as well. Now I tried to play around with the EQ, but I just couldn't match what the sound personalization did here. Because in the regular five band EQ, you can push out some decent bass, but it's very challenging to increase the treble to the point where the sound personalization does. If you start increasing the treble, even the mids, the bass automatically starts to decrease where with the sound personalization, you get that nice full bass, but the treble and mids don't fall behind somehow. It's pretty insane. And when I was filming some footage for this video, I just did a quick screen recording. I just did some random volumes in the test. I actually think it sounded the best when I did that. So if you want to copy that, it's playing right now. You can just look back 
copy that exactly and see if it sounds good for you. But again, I, I feel like they've got some algorithm going on so it does work with the kind of sound that you like to hear. The only issue with it is that you can't EQ the buds further when you have the sound personalization saved. And when you are doing the fine tuning, you can't play your own music. It's just the one default song that plays. So it is kind of hard to hear the changes that you are making until you go back into your own song. And you kind of, you'll probably notice you might have to go back and forth a little bit. But still, this is definitely worth playing around with, especially if you're a bit of a bass head like me and you want to get as much clarity as possible. The Momentum 3 were already the best at this. With this sound personalization, it just takes it to new levels. So that's dynamic and versatile. If you want the buzz to sound balanced, you're all good. Slightly bass boosted, great. Over the top bass boosted, saying he's got your back. And you get all this freedom better than any earbud I've tested. And that's why despite all the flaws, I keep coming back to these earbuds. And why I still think these are 100% worth it today if it's the dynamic and versatile sound you're looking for. As long as the flaws don't freak you out, but I've mentioned them. But now if you want to see how the Momentum 3 stack up against the best True Wireless earbuds, check out this video here where I compared, scored, and ranked the top six earbuds. So check that out. In the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. <laughs>